Today, we're talking about these damn things. Calling the GPU market a dumpster fire is like saying the Hubble telescope is a big magnifying glass. You know it, I know it, we all know it. Well, maybe. I still see people ask about this on the regular, and I'm not going to rehash everything that's led up to this point, but what I am going to address is where we're at right now, how this is all going to end, and a lot of speculation and misinformation surrounding the GPU apocalypse. So let's jump right into it. And the first thing we need to talk about is why you can't currently get a GPU at MSRP for the most part. And it's probably not the reason that you're typing into the comments right now, but it's mining. But my silicon shortage, unpopular opinion. I know, but let me explain. The current value of graphics cards isn't determined by their gaming performance. Rather, their ability to mine Ethereum weighed against power consumption. You can even see the trend of new GPU prices correlating with the value of Ethereum. And that's what large mining operations are using GPUs to mine. Now, the popular opinion is that the silicon shortage has remained the primary reason for the GPU apocalypse. I'll agree, it was certainly the catalyst at the start of the pandemic when everything was shut down, but now GPU shipments are up over what they were before the pandemic started. I mean, GPU availability is way up over it was, even last year. But wait one damn minute. If they've been shipping more cards and availability is high, it sure doesn't show. And you're not wrong. But that's because throughout this, a lot of cards haven't even made it to a lot of retailers. Scalpers and miners have evolved and they've registered businesses to buy cards by the pallet from distributors and wholesalers. Tech yes City has a great video talking about this. And it's also speculated that established distributors have even been prioritizing miners, which I don't think is too far-fetched. I believe we've also seen a drop in demand from gamers. <laughs> I know, this is delving into speculation, and I'd be interested to see just how many, so just out of curiosity, what have you decided to do in your search for a GPU? You know, Leave me a comment down below. But just as an anecdotal example, I've seen a lot of polls where people said they were giving up looking for a GPU and decided to find another hobby until this all blows over. Some have made the decision to move on to console gaming, and some people have become so jaded that they've said they're completely done with PC gaming altogether. And despite what people think, gamers are getting their hands on GPUs, me being one of them. Also, the STEMI checks have pretty much come to a halt, meaning less people with so-called free money to spend carelessly on luxury items like overpriced GPUs. So more GPUs are being shipped year over year. Demand outside of mining has potentially dropped. Availability is much higher and AMD, Nvidia and their partners are recording record profits. All of this doesn't really point to the silicon shortage as being the current primary driving factor, at least not for gamers. While global demand for silicon has increased quite a bit in a short period of time, Desktop gaming graphics cards are a very small segment of that demand, at least normally. Even if the new fabs could suddenly be snapped into existence, I don't think we could meet the demand from large mining operations and GPU prices would still be determined by their ability to mine Ethereum. Besides, you can pretty easily find CPUs in stock at MSRP. If the shortage was still the primary factor, you'd probably still be paying the scalper tax for new CPUs as well. But that doesn't make any sense. If they're easier to find on store shelves, shouldn't the prices be continuing to drop instead of going back up? You'd think so, but there's a nasty side effect to all this. Scalping. Cards being sold by retailers might as well be scalped, so what the hell? Well, someone in the supply chain has joined the scalpers. Is it the retailers? Board partners? AMD and Nvidia themselves? From what I understand, it's board partners and distributors. And luckily for them, people are blaming it all on the usual suspects like raw material shortages, supply chain issues, and tariffs. And I don't think it is. If you want a representation of where retail prices should be falling, take a look at EVGA. If all the other reasons were to blame for increased prices, you'd see something like an EVGA 3080 Ti for the Win 3 selling for over two grand like some of the other top tier models. But it's only up 20 bucks or so from its original MSRP. Fact is, other cards have been selling at retail at wildly inflated prices for months. EVGA has to deal with the same issues the rest of them do, yet when they pop up at retail, they're way closer to their original MSRP. So EVGA isn't taking an advantage and might be dealing directly to retailers. It also might explain why more VGA cards seem to be getting into the hands of gamers. 
So I truly believe the reason why it's so hard to find a GPU as of October 2021 at anything resembling MSRP is due to Ethereum mining and someone in the supply chain joining scalpers. And if Ethereum mining were to stop right now, I really believe we'd have a surplus of new GPUs. Now, there's really four ways this is gonna end, either through some form of legislation, market correction, increased supply, or via Ethereum 2.0, and thus a decrease in demand, or really any combination of. So, legislation. Something like what China did recently banning cryptocurrency once and for all. The People's Bank of China stated that the decision was made to protect the assets of the people. There are some who think this is a good idea, but I'm inclined to say it has more to do with something less savory. This precedes China rolling out its own state-backed digital yuan. And you can be sure that every single transaction can be tracked, and they'll have unlimited control over that currency. So it's really just oppressive legislation meant to have even more control over the people. Just the Chinese government doing Chinese government things. And if you think that can't happen here in Freedomville, you'd be wrong. And historically speaking, more control at the government level doesn't really translate to good times for the people. And as people lose faith in fiat currencies, crypto is slowly going to become more and more mainstream. At some point, one is going to make the step from a speculative investment to a mainstream currency. Just look at El Salvador. We're already starting to see it. Now, I'd prefer it be decentralized and out of the control of the government. Honestly, I think you should too. After all, they've done a bang-up job with our current situation that's been decades in the making. Besides, for legislation to truly work, it would have to be a global effort. Rather than banning crypto outright, I think a better goal is simply a decoupling of GPUs from crypto mining. Now, what exactly do I mean by a market correction? I'm no financial expert, so take this with a grain of salt. But the US market is in an inflationary bubble caused by various factors that's just waiting to be popped. One factor being that 40% of all US currency in circulation was released in the last year. That's not good. And it's caused the inflation rate to more than double. The government needs to take some corrective action, which if done incorrectly could result in a crash. The market could also correct itself via some sort of crash due to any number of variables. The alternative could be hyperinflation town, where a box of Lucky Charms will run you about 50 bucks as your money becomes worth less and less, to the point where bartering might make a return. This inflation is a result of the stimulus packages and many other efforts to prop up the economy after pretty much shutting it down. Granted, the rising cost of goods isn't just about inflation. For the same reason, many supply chain and logistic issues exist in just about any industry you can think of, not just silicon. There's not much that can be done to correct these things quickly. Regardless, the effects of 2021 will take years to correct. And if you don't live in the US, sure, this might not affect you as much, but the US economy is big enough to have a global impact. Just look at the recent dip in crypto values on the 21st of September. Not just crypto took a hit, the entire market did. And the cause? Evergrande, a large Chinese construction company is about to default on some pretty big loans. So if something big happens, you can see how it could have a widespread impact. And besides, the US certainly isn't the only country dealing with a similar situation right now. As a side note, business people of China, please stop putting ever in front of names. First, the ever given pulls an Austin Powers in the Suez Canal. Now this. It's clearly cursed. Seriously though, I'm not trying to scare you and I'm not saying a market-wide crash is imminent, but it's a possibility. Certainly not the way we'd want the crypto bubble to burst, but even a small correction could potentially help with the situation. Regardless, the road back is gonna be tough. Increased supply. Now that sounds great, doesn't it? But it's not a short-term solution either. With Intel and TSMC breaking ground on new fabs in Arizona, we'll eventually have more silicon capacity. And like I said, that sounds good, but there's been speculation that we'll have to wait for them to be completed before we can finally meet demand. Thing is, it will likely be 2024 at the earliest before we start seeing silicon roll out of any of them. Even then, it wouldn't help if there's still logistic and supply chain issues with the rest of the components on the PCB, the cooling solution, as well as the PCB itself. Keep in mind that even though we commonly refer to them as GPUs, 
The GPU is just one component of a graphics card. The GPUs will still need to be shipped off to Asia to be assembled into usable graphics cards. It's not like they're suddenly going to be manufacturing entire cards in the US. Certainly not TSMC. But I guess Intel might be planning on manufacturing their new cards end to end, but I seriously doubt it. Besides that, I think demand is going to drop significantly before supply could increase enough anyways. And that'll be due to the reason you've likely been hearing about for the last six months or so. Ethereum 2.0 or the move from proof of work to proof of stake. In simplistic terms, you have to stake your own Ethereum to earn more rather than use the hashing power of a GPU. Effectively, it means the end of mining Ethereum with graphics cards. So when will proof of stake finally come? I don't know. Nobody really does. And if they tell you otherwise, they're lying. Now, this changeover and Ethereum in general are far more complex than most people are giving them credit for. So there's a lot of speculation based on one of many variables. I see a lot of people making the mistake thinking that one day we'll have proof of work and the next we'll suddenly have proof of stake. But that's not how this works. The merge from proof of work to proof of stake is a gradual process. Technically, we already have Ethereum 2.0. It's been running in parallel to proof of work for some time now, and they're slowly transitioning from one to the other. They do this by upgrades to the Ethereum network to make it more efficient, more predictable, as well as other things. And that can impact profitability. The latest of those was EIP 1559 in August. Even though there was a decent hit to profitability, the value of Ethereum went up, pretty much leaving miners at a net zero change. So it didn't continue the downward trend of GPU prices like many hoped that it would. However, there's another upgrade slated for December that was meant to start the official transition to proof of stake, commonly referred to as the difficulty time bomb. Unfortunately, this was pushed back to as late as June next year, though the code could be ready as early as February. When that bomb goes off, it will be the end of GPU mining as it will cause the difficulty to rise exponentially, ending the proof of work model. That's not to say that EIP 3554 won't impact profitability, but it's not the end everyone was hoping for. The difficulty could rise between December and June, causing people to abandon it gradually, starting with people paying the most for power. Typically, your small hobbyist miners that live in areas with higher energy rates, as large operations intentionally set up in places where power is cheap. Obviously. It could also mean that difficulty remains pretty nominal until the time bomb goes off, and then spikes suddenly. Right now, there's no way to say for sure, and much is still up in the air. So there's light at the end of the sewage pipe, but it's hard to say when we'll reach it. However, I really do believe that we're on the tail end of this. You might be asking what this all means for you as a gamer. As the move to proof of stake gets closer, I'd expect new GP supply to tighten even more. I know, you really don't want to hear that. But if AMD and Nvidia are smart, they can see the writing on the wall and they don't want to be left with a surplus when the gravy train runs out of track. Add that with the logistic issues we have right now, Nvidia potentially halting and pure production temporarily, as well as TSMC reporting customers potentially hoarding chips, things might get worse before they get better. For used GPUs, I'd expect more and more miners to start purging their equipment to get the most return on it before the party ends, causing prices to gradually start to fall. But when that difficulty time bomb goes off, miners will be bleeding GPUs onto the used market. Used prices should fall sharply, and building a budget gaming PC with half-decent specs will be a thing again because mining has all but killed that market off. I mean, we still don't have any new entry-level cards, and who knows if we'll see any this generation. Speaking of new cards, prices won't really adjust much initially, and it'll take time for them to drop down closer to their original MSRP. Just keep in mind, that many other issues may still potentially exist. And I know, people are worried a negative precedent has been set for future releases of graphics cards, speculating as high as a 70% increase for the NVIDIA 4000 series. With people buying from scalpers, they're concerned that the scalping tax is here to stay. And it is, but at the same time, I think it isn't. For launches, anticipated high demand or limited run products, yeah but it was already a problem before this launch. And it's not just a problem for GPUs, PC components, or even electronics in general. It's nothing new, there's nothing stopping them, there are people willing to pay inflated prices early on, and it's an easy way to make money if you have the capital to buy them to flip. With people willing to spend that, sadly, they're not going anywhere. But I only think they're gonna be an issue at launch, for the most part, when stock is low but demand is high. 
Once it starts to stabilize and their market of people willing to pay absurd prices dries up, well, so will the scalpers, at least until the next launch. And I just don't see Ethereum mining being an issue in Q4 of 2022 when the 4000 series is set to launch. And if Nvidia or AMD think the majority of PC gamers will pay those kinds of prices, I think they'll have another thing coming. And while I'm expecting a worse price to performance ratio, I just don't buy into a 70% price hike. The other thing I see a lot of people saying is that Ethereum 2.0 doesn't mean the end of GPU mining. I've seen miners say, well, oh, I'll just move to a different coin. Once again, yes and no. First, I agree that GPU mining isn't really gonna die with Ethereum moving to proof of stake. However, if you take all the hashing power that's going into Ethereum right now, it's got nowhere to go. If you focused it on another coin, the difficulty would rise exponentially and profitability would plummet, honestly to the point where the cost of power would be way higher than the return, if any at all. There isn't another coin right now that could bear that much hashing power being thrown at it. Even if you distributed it across all the other GPU mineable coins, Ethereum makes up over 95% of the global market cap. Combined, all the others make up less than five. Just take a look at the top cryptocurrencies. Most of these aren't even mineable with the GPU for one reason or another, and Ethereum is about to join that list. While I believe that some hobbyist miners will continue to mine other coins, many won't. And the large mining operations definitely won't. There's just no money in it for them, especially if the value of that coin is less than the cost of power. It'd just make more sense to buy it rather than mine it. Otherwise, that's what they would have done after ASICs took over Bitcoin and after the last Ethereum crash, but they didn't. While something else might eventually take the place of Ethereum, that's gonna take some time, and that time isn't now. Even then, if that coin isn't ASIC resistant like Ethereum was, GPUs could quickly be muscled out anyways. So what are your options? Well, there's the answer you're sick of hearing. Wait. Yeah, this one sounds about as good as selling one of your kidneys to a dude in a van down by the river. But it's an option. No, the waiting part. Really though, I'd ask you to take a step back and evaluate your situation. Are you trying to upgrade because your current GPU sucks? Or might you just be getting caught up in demand? Take a look at your rig. Your current hardware might not even be a good match for a new GPU. Even a 3060 might require a lot of upgrades to even make sense or build a new system altogether. Also, does your rig do a good job of delivering a gaming experience you're satisfied with? If so, both are good reasons to continue to hold the line. And when the mining bubble does burst, the secondhand market will be filled with cheap GPUs. Just don't get caught up in the hype. And honestly, waiting would be my suggestion. But if you already sold that extra kidney and you're flush with cash, you could always pay the scalper tax and offset the cost by mining with it. I'm sure that statement just pissed at least a couple of you off. And before you leave that scathing comment, hear me out. This really doesn't set a negative precedent at this point. Miners have been buying from scalpers for the better part of a year. That ship has sailed. And once Ethereum mining is done, those prices won't make sense to the vast majority of people anyways. And if you don't buy that scalp GPU, someone else probably will. So it might as well be you, and then use mining to offset the cost or potentially get the card for free. Once again, negative precedent. But that's like seeing a dollar on the ground, and you can only pick it up if you leave some spare change in its place, but not doing so out of spite. Mining isn't the GPU killer it's made out to be, so long as you keep the card cool, especially if you undervolt. So when you're not gaming, put it to work and get yourself a piece of that pie. But there are some things you need to keep in mind. First, you have to deduct the cost of power from your earnings. If you don't pay for power, well, Lucky you. Next, it's crap, but you're likely gonna have to pay taxes on those earnings as well. Lastly, the value of Ethereum isn't exactly stable. Remember, it's really just a speculative investment right now, and while it's becoming more stable, it's still unpredictable. And if there's a market correction, it could really turn that into a gamble. If you're gonna do it, go into it planning to pay the full price, and anything you make to offset is just icing on the cake. Only do it if you can afford to. Don't count on that money because you could be disappointed. Also, keep in mind that Ethereum 2.0 and upgrades to the network could end your ability to mine as early as a couple of months from now. While you could move to other coins at that point, that's also no guarantee. I'll be honest, it's not a great option, 
but it is one. Now, if you're attached to both of your kidneys or you're not willing to pay the scalper tax, you could always buy something more reasonable until this all blows over. This might be the best option if you've built a system and you're still waiting on the GPU or you ended up buying something out of the bottom of the barrel to get by. In which case, your best option is probably something with four gigs of VRAM, since they're not good for Ethereum mining. Still, the prices aren't great since they can still mine other coins like Litecoin, whose sudden value increase might explain a recent price hike. You could always go with a two gig card, but that's gonna be hard ask for anything somewhat recent. Anyways, I feel like the NVIDIA 900 series tends to be the best priced performance option. At around 150, you have the RX 560, GTX 960, and GTX 970, if you're lucky. Obviously, go with the 970 if it's closer to that, but usually they're closer to the 200 mark. Between the 560 and the 960, it's a no-brainer. The 960 is noticeably faster. At around 200 to 250, you have the RX 570 and GTX 980. They're about on par performance-wise, so go with whichever one you can find cheaper. And it seems the 980 is easier to find closer to 200. It likely consumes more power than the 570, making it a little less desirable for mining. There's also the 1050 Ti and the 970, but neither makes sense at that price. Bumping up to the 300 to 350 dollar mark, you have the RX 580, GTX 1066 gig, and the 980 Ti. And the 980 Ti is the clear winner here and much easier to find closer to 300. The biggest downside to the 900 series is the power consumption. So you OEM enthusiasts, don't assume you can get away with that OEM power supply. However, the 6600 just released with some models as low as $330. Make no mistake, all of these options are horrible values. But if you can find a 6600 for under 400, it's easily the least offensive ripoff of the group. And I know, there are so, so, so many videos about this on YouTube. I didn't even want to make this video. It's just become this bipolar cesspool. You've got videos promising salvation one day and the outright depths of hell the next. And there's just so much freaking clickbait. I just want you to know that you have control and you have options. I just... I don't want to see people give up over a temporary situation because with people as pissed off as they are, and rightfully so, these videos just aren't helping the situation. And if life has taught me anything, it's that you never mix uppers and downers. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, hitting that thumbs up is always appreciated. If you didn't and you're still watching, well, I guess it sucks to be you. But then again, that's not really my fault is it? Anyways, I'm out and I'll see you with the next video.